George Washington, the first president of the United States, was born on February 22nd, 1732. Or was he? Due to a change in calendars when Washington was 20, he celebrated his birthday on two different days each year. I'm Bob Summers, and this is a presidential story. On a cold February day at Pope's Creek Plantation in Westmoreland County, Virginia, Augustine and Mary Ball Washington were overjoyed at the birth of a baby boy, George. The date was February 11th, 1731. Julian calendar. What does Julian calendar mean? In 40 BCE, Julius Caesar saw that the lunar calendar the Romans were using was not accurately keeping track of the seasons because their 10 months accounted for only 355 days. When Caesar visited Cleopatra in Egypt, he saw their calendar was much more accurate, so he adopted it. The Egyptians figured out that the Earth took 365.24219 days to rotate around the sun. Caesar wanted to keep it simple, so he rounded to 365.25, which meant every four years he would add an extra day, a leap day. Then he named the calendar after himself, and we have the Julian calendar. 11 months, one of which was named after himself, July, with either 30 or 31 days, and a 28 or 29 day February. Although there was no February 29th in a leap year, they just repeated the 23rd. But what about that rounding up to a quarter of a day? The Julian calendar was adding almost 11 minutes to every year. It may not seem like much, but now let's fast forward 1600 years where these extra 11 minutes had caused a drift of 10 days. Again, that may not seem like much, but it did to someone, the Pope. The Catholic Church determines the date of Easter based on the vernal equinox, and that date was shifting too much. So Pope Gregory XIII introduced a new calendar in October 1582 that was very much the same as Caesar's, but instead of a leap day every four years, without exception, it removed the leap years from years divisible by 100, like the year 1900 unless it was also divisible by 400, like the year 2000. And like any good calendar creator, he named it after himself, the Gregorian calendar. So this is where we get to the impact on Washington's birthday. Protestant England didn't really care if the Pope wanted to change the calendar, so they continued using the Julian calendar for another 170 years. And now they were 11 days out of sync, not just with the seasons, but with a lot of the countries in Europe. Finally, England recognized this was indeed a better calendar, so they made the change, and that meant a change for their colonies as well. You've probably heard the mnemonic that starts, 30 days hath September. Well, that wasn't true in 1752. September 1752 only had 19 days. One day it was the 2nd, and the next day was the 14th, jumping 11 days forward. And this means Washington's birthday of February 11th was now on February 22nd in the new calendar. Another change the English made was regarding when the new year started. Prior to the reforms, the English celebrated the new year on March 25th, the day the Archangel Gabriel told Mary she would give birth to Jesus. When the calendar was adjusted to start the year on January 1st, Washington needed to adjust his birth year from 1731 to 1732, so he would be the correct chronological age. I cannot imagine thinking my birthday was on February 11th for 20 years and suddenly being told it was actually 11 days later. And apparently Washington and his contemporaries couldn't imagine it either, for he would have celebrations on both days. 
The first recorded celebration of Washington's birthday was on February 22, 1779, 10 years before he would become president. In 1781, the French army, commanded by the Comte de Rochambeau, wrote to Washington that they had celebrated his birthday on February 12th, since the 11th was the Lord's Day. Henry Knox, Washington's Secretary of War, sent a happy birthday letter to Washington on February 11th, 1790. And so it continued until his last birthday in 1799, when his diary of February 11th noted his attendance at a birthday celebration in Alexandria, Virginia, in his honor. It was followed by another celebration on February 22nd. After his passing, February 22nd has been uniquely recognized as Washington's birthday. On what would have been Washington's 100th birthday in 1832, Congress adjourned to commemorate his birthday centennial. In 1856, Massachusetts became the first state to officially recognize Washington's birthday as a holiday. In 1879, Congress added Washington's birthday to the list of federal holidays, but only employees in the District of Columbia had the day off. It wouldn't become a federal holiday for everyone until 1885. In 1968, the Uniform Monday Holiday Act was passed by Congress, establishing the third Monday in February as the date we observe Washington's birthday, even though that date will never land on the 22nd or the 11th for that matter. And even though today we know this holiday as President's Day, that's not the official name. We are officially celebrating Washington's birthday. And that's why Washington celebrated his birthday twice a year. I hope you have a happy President's Day, uh, Washington's birthday. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to hear more presidential stories. And please visit POTUS.com for more interesting facts about the presidents.